<clears throat> please excuse my voice. I've been under the weather for a couple of days, but uh, just wanted to get this out there. Uh, starting a build. Had someone contact me on my uh, Etsy site and ask me to build them. Oh, can't get this clamp off. Hold on. There we go. Asked me if they sent me a box, if I would build them a guitar. I told them, of course, I would. Um, so here you go. This is the beginnings of the neck. I just need to uh, get this to the right thickness. You saw me cutting up the fretboard. And so uh, once I do that, I'll glue the fretboard on and we will get started. So here's the box I'm building. Cohiba pieces rattling around in there and that's the pieces I've already cut to, to brace the inside. So a couple things to do. Uh, I know I got started, you know, before I uh, got a little bit done before I started this video, but uh, oh well, I can kick it off right here. But anyway, it's going to be uh, <clears throat> rosewood. So this is a rosewood, uh, rosewood fretboard. Still got the template on the back. I need to pull that off rosewood fretboard um, so I got a piece of rosewood for the heel and I also put some some rosewood up here uh, in the headstock I had bought some rosewood a while back I was gonna you know maybe make a neck out of it and then when I got the wood in I was kind of disappointed because it was uh, cupped and twisted and you know I couldn't find a piece long enough to make long enough that was straight and not twisted to make a to make a neck so uh, it's been sitting up here on the shelf for a while so uh, I got the fretboard wood and I was like well I bet if I cut that stuff down I can get a piece straight enough to make a heel so bam there you go uh, guess that's what it'll get used for all right <clears throat> so I'm gonna cut this down to size and then uh, we'll get started on this build okay I don't think I've showed this before but basically take the material off you can see this is Still needs to be cleaned up a lot, but I get this down to size. And then uh, I use several different uh, designs or shapes for the headstock, but uh, uh, I kind of I kind of like this one. And, and basically, what it is is a mixture between two. I got these templates from CB Giddy. And you see, this is a four-string template, and it's a three-string template. And you can see that neither one of these fit what I've got drawn on here but I basically use both of these to to get my my shape I do that I get it lined up here that's where I, I draw the uh, curves here I use this piece for the end and then I use a little straight edge I just like it a little bit a little bit bigger than the three string version but not quite as wide as the four string version so this is this is just kind of what I come up with. So I'll rough cut this out with the with the jiggy, and then uh, and then I'll take the take it over and sand on it. Uh, take it to the uh, drill press. I have a sanding bit on the drill press, and I'll I'll work these corners in. But anyway, there you go. Okay, a couple minutes on the drill press with the sanded disc, and then uh, a little sanding to get get this kind of smooth out. She's ready to go. So now we're gonna glue up the fretboard. I've already rounded over these edges here, as you can see. So I do all of that before I glue the wings on. Glue the wings on and I cut the wings down to the proper thickness so that they'll accept the tuners. You know, boom. And so now, time to Glue the old fretboard up. We'll be in business. All right, I almost got ahead of myself. So, before I glue this fretboard on here, I need to get this neck fitted to the box, right? So, I've cut it down so it fits inside the box. This is just a relief for the lid. This will touch the top of the box inside of the top of the box so will this and this is where it'll meet up with the box so I <clears throat> I do that first because uh, I always end up I try to end up with some overhang Let me put this on here right 
on the, the fretboard. So you see how that, so this part of the fretboard is gonna actually come over onto the box. So <clears throat> I do that first, and then while I'm in this step, before I, uh, before I glue up this uh, fretboard, I'll also go ahead and get the neck centered or squared in the box. Uh, so you could do this however you want to do it. <clears throat> the way I do it is I usually take something like this uh, combination square here. and I will check it, get it pushed up against the wood so I know how far it is there on that end. And then do the same thing on this end. And I got a little block here uh, clamped in so I know that's where it's at. And then I will basically glue in two blocks so uh, during assembly when I slide this neck in it slides in between those two blocks um, of course it'll be screwed in from the bottom but but that's uh, that's the best way or that's the way I've come up with for doing this um, it works well for me so that's the way I do it. I just figured I would I would share so I do I probably check this measurement uh, several, several, several times before I lock it in. But with this one locked in, I'll glue this one up, clamp it in, then I'll unclamp this one, glue that one up, pull the neck out, then I'll glue these blocks in, which uh, the neck will, will ride on, and then I'll go to gluing up the corner blocks. So. Yeah, I said I was going to glue up the fretboard, but I needed to take care of that first. So, uh, as soon as I get this glued up, then I will uh, glue up this fretboard. There you go. <clears throat> All right. The neck has set overnight. And, uh, I've showed this many times. I uh, always try to use this level as a straight edge just to uh, even out the pressure try to get the stain i mean the wood's already straight but just make sure the pressure's even and that this uh, fretboard and this neck is uh, straight as it can be mm. this one gave me trouble last time all right, come on, get off there. there we go. All right, so there it is. Now as the fun starts to begin is to, to get this thing all shaped out. It's where it looks good, but you know, it's got its kind of, you know, it's, it's getting close. All right, also, the box is glued up. So remember I put these pieces in here, this is to help center up the neck. So when the neck goes in here, there's a slide in there so that I know it's centered. You see it's overhang here, so. What I gotta do is adjust on my, there we go. There it is. So, a little bit of adjusting uh, for the braces that I put in here. And, you know, to make sure that this lid closes solid all the way around, you can see it's maybe a little high <clears throat> right here at the front. So I will uh, I will do that a little adjustment, but other than that, there you go. That's that's it. So from here, I uh so this is a piece of two pieces of tape. Since this is paper, I don't want to tape over it. So I tape these two pieces of tape together so there's no sticky side. 
So that way I can still cover this up, but I can, I'll end up putting more tape on here so I can mark out where the, where I'm going to drill for the bridge and where I'm going to cut for the, for the pickup cover. I'm going to put these two little, uh, I don't know if you can see them on here, two little black dots here. Basically this uh, piece of paper says Cohiba right here. So that's the start and the end of it. So just to, just for reference, so I know where it's at. Um, I know that my, uh, yeah, I know that my bridge is gonna fall. So there's a 25 inch mark right there. It'll be past the, past the C. And I'll try to keep my keep my pickup outside of the C as well, so you, or outside of the A, so you can see see the cohiba on it when it's done. But there you go. Next step is uh, a lot of work with the Shintu. Get her down in a final shape. And then uh, going to work with the, the sandpaper, stepping it on down. So here we go. Okay, <clears throat> so I still got a little ways to go. But here's kind of a look at the box. Let's stick this bridge up here so you can see where that goes. Um, the box has been wired up. This over to the side for now. Talk about the box for just a second. So the box has been wired up. Here's a look at the inside. I like uh, I like these boxes that uh, kind of close. You know where half a lid or a quarter of a lid closes over the box. Cause that that means it gives me room to kind of tuck everything up neatly inside the box. So this one does have a tone and a volume knob and then I got the output jack just attached here once I close the lid. I'll screw it in, finish it off. Uh, but there you go. That's a look at the inside of the box. Also, uh, so this has a mini humbucker in here so this raises and lowers. Right now it's up to all the way up so I can slide the neck in and then it'll be lowered back now. I'll show you the neck here in a second. Uh, put these uh, extra pieces on here uh, to accommodate the screws for the ring that goes around it. Those screws are a little bit, uh, they have a pretty long shoulder and I just like having a little extra bite. And then uh, these pieces on the inside, this braces it up, this helps uh, center in the box. Uh, all these pieces are, you know, leftovers from, from uh, when I cut a neck down, cut wood down to the size to make, make a neck out of it. So there's that. Here is the, the neck. I still got a few things left to do, but you can see there's a notch here. Okay, so this notch lines up underneath this. And that'll allow it to lower down into the box. But uh, to get it in the box, I need this, this raised up. Also, you'll see I got pieces uh, glued onto the edge here. Um, and these are to accommodate the holes, the screws for the bridge. The bridge is just, the screws are just slightly wider than an inch and a half. So you need a little something extra for them to bite on. So that's what this is. And I always use, usually use, uh, you can see, this is uh, this is wing A, and this comes from a, a fretboard. Uh, after I put all the frets in it and I cut it down to fit on the, the neck, I had pieces left over. So that's usually what I use these pieces left over. So just to use everything. Um, I still need to drill some holes for the tuners and uh, get the neck adjusted to the box fits in there. Fits in there nicely, but uh, I still need to get some final fitment adjustments. <clears throat> so, so 
so that when I finally do go get ready to assemble it, everything will, everything will come together nicely. So there we are. <clears throat> I'm going to drill them holes for the tuners, and then uh, I'm going to string this bad boy up, and I'll get it uh, tuned up and intonated, and then I'll, I'll give you a look at the finished product. Arg. All right, uh, I got this guitar put together, and when I was wiring it up, I, uh, I definitely tested that the pickup worked, but I didn't test the tone knob. Well, take it back. I did turn the tone knob while I was testing it, make sure there's no scratching or any of that stuff. But the tone knob. <clears throat> not changing the tone so uh, I got this together last night and I uh, tuned it up intonated it and uh, then I was messing with it and that's when I realized the tone knob didn't work <clears throat> so it was late last night so I had to wait till today so I had some time to think about it and I'm pretty sure I know what I did so I'm gonna take this apart and uh, see what I find out and I'll give you a quick look at it and then uh, hopefully that takes care of it and then we will uh, I'll get to, I'll give you a good look at this thing all right so here we go okay sure enough just took the neck out um, and what I thought happened is actually what happened so if you look right here I bent the lugs back so that I could ground them to the pot I grounded the one for the volume because I actually have to put the wire in there from the from the pickup but I did not solder this one so it is not making contact so there is the problem so fire up my soldering iron real quick here okay soldering irons fired up Now, now we have a solid connection. Yep, looks good. So there you go. Uh, just make sure you double check your work before you close up your box.
All right, here we go. This is the Cohiba Black. Uh, it's got a mini humbucker. It's got a uh, hardtail bridge. It does have a tone and a volume knob. <clears throat> Two little sound holes. It's got strap buttons. Uh, cool thing about this, and I really like this, is this thing has a uh, uh, rosewood fretboard. And I have a piece of rosewood that I used for the heel as well. So it came out really nice. It's got rosewood up here in the headstock as well. It's got locking tuners. Came out awesome. Solder burns for fret dot markers. You can see them on the front and on the side. And the cool thing about boxes like this, you know, that are not really long, is uh, you can you can get almost well. If I had pushed it, I could have got 24 frets, but this thing has 22 frets on it. And you can reach all the way over here to the 22nd fret. So it's playable to the 22nd. And if I had pushed this uh, humbucker in just a little bit, I could have get all, could have got all 24 frets. But uh, this, is, this is pretty awesome. Came out nice. So <clears throat> thanks for checking out my video. Uh, I got a few more. Uh, actually I actually had three uh, mortal, coils, mortal coil cigar box guitars that I'm trying to build. Uh, I'm going to build them all, all the same. You know, they're hand built, so there'll be little differences, I guess, uh, between them. But uh, they're going to they're gonna all be the same. I'll put those on my site. And I started building those, and then I got a request to build this. So I kind of pushed those to the side so I can get this thing done. So uh, that video will be following this real soon. But... Uh, Thanks for checking this out. If you got any questions or comments, you know, please leave them below. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And thanks for checking this out.